Hey YouTubers, this is Dishti Ak with you once again. Um, I am a Philadelphia-based event and landscape photographer and welcome to another episode of my photography blog. In this episode, we are going to look at fireworks. This is July. Uh, we're towards the end of July now, but as we know, in, towards the beginning of the month, on the 4th of July, we had fireworks all across America and it was possibly one of the most photographed events. Now, when it comes to taking pictures of fireworks, there are lots and lots of factors. Uh, it's a very difficult thing to do because it happens only once a year or maybe twice a year. It takes place for a very short amount of time and it takes place in the middle of the night where you are crowded with people around you and you're under pressure to take the photo you want. Uh, of course, if you're there just to enjoy, lucky you are. But if you want to take pictures, a firework is one of the most challenging subjects but not necessarily the most difficult one because it takes a lot of trial and error and then and in this day and age we are lucky that we get to know about what other people have tried so i'm going to share with you some tips about taking pictures of a firework and then in the processing table we're going to look at how we can take the pictures and process them because there's a lot that goes on after taking the photo as well now, as far as taking the photo, what I'm mentioning here is settings that I have tried. And of course, there are others who have tried different settings. And all of these are just good starting points for you. Anytime you're taking pictures of a firework, you have the challenge of going through it and on the fly making adjustments that work for you and that, that, that fit that particular event that you're covering. Now, when it comes to fireworks, the first advice that I give anyone is that you must always have a plan B. And this automatically means that you should be doing your homework, you should be doing your scouting, and you should know that there are, or there can be, at least two approaches, at least two scenarios, and you should have two different plans accordingly. Let me give you some examples. Uh, you may go into the firework. For example, I am in, in Philadelphia and there are events um, that take place. There's the New Year's fireworks. They have two of those. There's the 4th of July firework and they all happen around famous known buildings. They happen uh, near the Ben Franklin Bridge. They happen near the Art Museum. Well, I know that it's a wonderful location. We know that there's always an event and music in, in a gathering place. There are places where people gather to view the fireworks. But there are some other factors. For example, you know which building or which location the firework is going to take place. Nice and good. But do you know how far up in the air the, uh, the bursts and the explosions will take place? You need to know that because you need that information to be able to create the frame that you want. And unless you have the right frame, you will be left hunting in the dark, literally in the dark, because you don't have, if you change your frame, you do not know where to focus, you do not know what to do. So you need to know ahead of time whether the equipment you have or the location that you get is good enough or far enough or near enough to capture a full frame. Can you have the foreground element, the, um, the area of interest and the sky where all the fireworks are going to take place? You need to know that. You need to know whether you're going to try to shoot that or the other option is, do you want to zoom in and take pictures of the individual explosions of those uh, little fireworks? That's the decision to make. So based on that, you need to know whether you're going to go for a long lens or a wide lens. So that's an example of what you're going to need to know. And you need to know this because if your plan is wrong, you will know that within the first few seconds. And at that point in time, you need to not panic and very calmly switch over to the other plan, try that out, and of course, make little adjustments. Now, when it comes to adjustments, there are so many factors. And of course, there are, even if it weren't too many, it can get very confusing. When you are under the pressure, a lot of times you confuse which, which dial to change. You confuse which, which parameter to play with. So let's go go for uh, go through some of those situations. When you're taking uh, photos of a firework, you can keep your ISO at 100. You do not need to 
go to any faster ISO 200, 400, uh, 600, 800, 1600. You do not need to go that far because even, I mean, of course, when you're framing, it will look dark and you will have the temptation to boost the ISO. But even then, the point is you are not shooting for the building, you're shooting for the firework and they are bright. They are so bright that you can have your ISO set at 100 and you can have your aperture value at um, 9, 11, 13 or even higher if you want. Even after that, you will get a very well exposed photo. So you need to know that and you need to prepare according to that. At any point in time, if you're in trouble, you can always play around with the aperture if you want, but I, I would recommend that you fix it at a certain point, nine or higher, you will notice that 13, 16 work better for some of my cases. Once you find that sweet spot, stay there. Same with the ISO 100, you can stay there. What do you play with then? You play with your shutter speed. And this is very critical to know because this also brings us to another fork where we have to decide between two altern alternatives. Depending on where you are, when the bursts are there in the sky, when you see the patterns, you may be in a position where you have a full frontal projection, meaning you can have a burst here and a burst here, and they will not overlap too much. And because they wouldn't overlap, you wouldn't have too many areas that are burned. Because if it's a red burst and a green burst, you want to see that red and green. You don't want to see your picture over uh, exposed in certain places so that you have only white blown highlights. So you don't want that. You need to know where you are and based on that. And you will see in the photos that I show you, this year I was not looking at it straight. I was looking at it from an angle. And as a result, there was a lot of times when there were overlaps and I had a lot of burnt um, pixels there and I did not get the beautiful patterns that I wanted. It was different. It was still beautiful, but it was different. It was not the best view you would get from just staring at it from the right in front. So you need to know that. And based on that, you need to make decisions. So the reason I say this is when you are taking pictures, you need to be aware some things in terms of almost checklist like things that you can uh, do. If you are at the location early, probably there will still be some light. It will be sunset or thereafter. Take some pictures before anything happens. Take some pictures while you are either in the golden hour or the blue hour. Take some pictures because if you take that background and eventually superimpose photos and if you do a composite, it will turn out brilliantly. So take that picture, take a picture of the deep dark sky before any firework and then take a picture after everything's over because when you take the last picture you'll see a lot of smoke from those explosions. So take those pictures and I forgot to mention uh, but I, I guess you have guessed already another decision that you have to make is whether you are going to go for an, um, for a composite or not. In my photo, you will see that I have taken a lot of these pictures and I've sat down and I've just mixed and merged and placed them accordingly. Because when you take, when you look at a firework show, uh, you'll be there staring at the sky for 15 minutes and in that time there will be hundreds, hundreds of bursts and they will look beautiful. There will be all these patterns that will be right in front of your eye, but you can't take pictures of all of that. In that case, you would end up with a collection of a hundred photos and people would get bored eventually. So you need to bring that, you need to capture that essence and just bring it together to encapsulate that in a few photos. So in your mind, you need to know ahead of time whether you're going to make composites or are you going to make just standalone pictures. It's a matter of taste, but you need to be very deliberate in the choice you make. And now the final thing is when you are looking to take photos of fireworks do yourself a favor beg borrow or steal but get a remote release get a bulb release because you will be setting your shutter in bulk mode you'll have the cable release 
it doesn't cost much. It costs between $7 to $30, depending on how fancy you want it to be. What it does is the shutter is on when you have your finger pressed on it. So have that, use that. The way to use it in terms of timing, in my experience, what works best is between two and a half seconds to four and, four and a half seconds. The rest of the settings, as I said, your ISO can be a, is set to 100. Your aperture value can be 11 or 13. But when you are controlling it, when you're opening um, your lens, keep that open for about two and a half seconds. And the reason I mention is that in my observations, that's the amount of time when you see from an explosion to the entire ray coming down towards the end. If you go beyond that, if you go to about four and a half seconds or so, it kind of peters out a little bit and it doesn't look as good. You can go for a long exposure, say seven seconds. It might work well for you, but that's where you need to be in a good location. That's where you need to make sure that the different bursts that are taking place are not all in the same area because that way you will get a lot of burnt, uh, burnt pixels. So know the projection from the location where you are and make these decisions. Um, another technique that a lot of people use is keeping your, um, you're keeping your lens open for a long time. Say you don't have access to a cable release. You still want to photograph fireworks. You can't just keep on, you know, you can't set it to two and a half seconds and just press it, press it, press it, because it, you'll, you'll shake your camera. So if you want, you can have it um, on timer and every time you can have it open for, say, 30 seconds, the max you can go. If you go that route, what you need to do is have a piece of black uh, cloth or a black board or something so that in between the bursts, you can cover the lens. So all you need to do is the, the head of the lens, just cover that and whenever you're there after a few seconds you will sort of be able to predict the rhythm and when you do that what you need to do is the two two and a half seconds that i mentioned or revealing the lens and covering it again do that when you hear the sound of something being um you know projected in the air so you'll hear that whee noise and you know that a burst is going to come that is when you press that is when you open so that you capture everything from that explosion to the trail until it ends. So that takes about two and a half to three seconds. Um, you can keep some cushion before and after that will work well. And also when you are in that location to take photos, approach that as your typical nightscape. Forget the fireworks, look around you and think how you can take a good photo in the night at that time. Uh, some tips, say if you're near a road, there's the opportunity to take photos of a, um, a light trail. There are cars going and you have um, headlights and taillights, just capture a few light trails. Um, if it is, uh, even if it's in the night, you, you'll, see, you'll find buildings that are, are usually lit in a fantastic way. Take pictures of that. And also when you're taking pictures of fireworks, many a times, the best subject and the best photo is not in the sky, but right in front of you. There may be a little child who is there for the first time and he or she will be looking at the sky in, in joy and in curiosity and in awe that you and I are completely incapable of. So try to capture that moment. You know, just, just look around and find those moments. Um, find a dad who is showing his kid a firework for the first time. Um, find a place where there's, there's a reflection. Find a kid who is covering his ears because he's afraid. So there are so many opportunities. So you need to just keep your eyes open, enjoy the fireworks as if as you would enjoy it even if you were without the camera. And if you can do that, then you're going to come home and you're going to have photos in your camera uh, which truly will allow you to relive the memory. So I hope this has been helpful. We are going to process some of the photos. These were mostly busts because I couldn't get a good location this time. 
and um, I, I went there with my little baby so we had to be in a parking garage I couldn't go as close to it as I would have liked to maybe in a couple of years I'll go there with him and he'll have this camera or another one to take photos uh, so but I will still show you those pictures and we'll see what we can do, the most we can make out of whatever photo we had and you, you'll get to see the basics as well. The basics are always the same. What enhan enhancements we make with it is where we actually get to make our creative expressions. So I hope you like this episode. Um, let's head on to the editing table. Thank you. Alright, so here we are in Lightroom and we have uh, three pictures here for you. The first one is a base image that I took at the very beginning before there's any firework. We were still uh, some ways away and it was dark, as dark as can be in a city so big as Philadelphia. But we were there and then once the firework started, I took a few photos and I'm, I'm just keeping only a couple of those here. And the first thing you'll notice is that the framing is different and something else you'll notice is that uh, the aperture value, I, I started at 13 when I took this uh, base picture, but I eventually went up to 16. And that's what I found was useful for the fireworks that I was trying to uh, photograph. And that also gives an indication that you really don't need to worry about pushing the ISO or, or any other thing. It's really very bright. And um, this I created from a panorama actually, and I'll, I'll show you how to do that in a separate episode. So that's why you see the framing uh, to be different because from where I was, this is, this is the frame that I got with the 50 millimeter, and that's the one that I had with me at that time. So I took a few photos and created this base um, that I use for all pictures, and I suggest that you do something similar. It'll, it'll really make your life easy. So what we do is we select all of these, we right click, edit, um, edit in, open as layers in Photoshop. So you do that and um, it, it'll take a few seconds to load up. Um, so what we are going to be doing, let me explain that in the meantime. So what we're going to try and do is we will, I'll just show you as an instructional, um, you know, you know, thing, uh, instructional task to how you can take those fireworks and apply layers on them. That's what we're going to be using here. So we're going to apply layers and selectively uh, make just uh, the, the bursts visible and go from there. The idea is you have a clean image with a dark black sky and on that sky you want your fireworks. So we're going to see what we can do and there are some mismatches which actually is good because in this case you will know how to deal with it if you um, if you're faced with those situations so there's the second photo and it'll take just a few more seconds so our task will be to to look into what we can do with this light um, for one because this bright light was just aimed directly at us again I, I wish I weren't in that uh, that location but I was and I need to make the most of it so something to do with that and also we need to worry about how to deal with uh, the misalignment that we have because the base picture um, the composite picture is of a completely different um, framing than the bursts so we need to worry about that alright so the first thing I'll do is I'll bring this one down and let me zoom out just a little bit so that it's easier and I want to make sure that we are not working with a picture bigger than the, uh, the frame that we have, but I'll, I'll, I'll crop it out later on, this transparent area that you see. So the first thing is, we'll take these two, and they should be aligned perfectly, but in case they are not, um, go to Edit, then Auto Align Layers, and just you know keeping it at Auto, select OK. What it does is that it takes those layers and makes sure that every element is in place um, and you know based on the content. So we have that. And um, as we notice that these are kind of placed upward, which I personally am okay with because um, you know that's the best I could do. Um, we'll just live with it. Now, in this case, what we're going to be doing is let's make one of those invisible and have the invisible and have the first one to work with we are going to create um, a mask a layer mask and I'm going to press down alt or option and click on it so create a black mask if you simply clicked on it I'll, I'll do it for the other one let's so 
if you simply just click on it you'll get a white mask but in that case what you do is you press command or control I and that turns black and black means that is invisible so in this picture and of course remember to click on the um, the layer as you do it and make sure that you have a white brush we take a brush we make sure the foreground color is white and we are on the layer and we don't want the opacity to be so much so let's just reduce it to say 60 percent and what we do then is we paint and approximately just just an eyeball estimate that we should have something around here and that's actually it so let's take that and as we paint here we reveal this little burst of firework so that's one all right so we got that one and if we click on just and what I did was all pressing down alter option I clicked on the mask to see what what I did cover here and then um, just click back so that's the first one we'll, we'll we'll tidy it up later on if you want to do it right now you can of course zoom in and pressing B to get the brush and pressing X to uh, you know flip the colors and as you oh my bad um, I'm on the photo I should be on the mask so on the mask as I am in there you go in, in in with black you paint on it and that takes away the part that you painted on so you can do that um, in, in, you can you can fine-tune it as you want let's let's just move on to the other one and show how to do it and we'll come back to this because this you can this is down to how tediously and how you know meticulously you want to work so let's take the uh, first uh, the other one again click on the mask I'm um, pressing X or you can click on this here to make sure that white is selected and approximately this is the area where we have the bursts and lo and behold that's that's actually where it is so let's get that we have revealed uh, and I'm painting over because I, my opacity is low so I just want to make it a little bright as I go over it again and again alright so again with this one we ended up taking a bit more than we wanted so let's press X and uh, yes I am on the mask so let's do that so you know how you can reveal so what, what you do is you make the other one visible and you have something now the problem is we have these fireworks oh, you know overlapping each other and that doesn't look nice so what we do in this case is we change the blending mode and from normal you can use lighten or screen and again go to the other one and select screen and that's basically the trick if you do this the blending mode changes so that the um, the areas where you where it is lighter um, or where you have light pixels it is what gets shown and the areas where it's not is not shown so immediately you went from something like this which is very choppy and crude to this which is definitely much more blended in so you can do that and then of course we can go in we can take our brushes and we can play around with the masks um, until you know we can we can soften it a little bit to the size if we want um, this is actually not looking pretty as I do this on the fly nope I'm not going to keep any of those and that misalignment is coming up again but let's let's leave it here uh, the, the the instructional part of this is that you can take this number one is you take a mask you um, reveal the ones the areas that you want and then you change the blending mode and then of course in in the case of this photo we need to crop it just a little bit so that we are we don't have to uh, worry about the transparent areas but after this there's actually something else you can do and I wanted to quickly touch that we are going to press command or control T and that's going to uh, make bring us in the free transform mode and that's for just this one layer that's visible so what we can do now is we can move this around and we can move it up 
we can enlarge this if we want and we can place it on the screen uh, where we really want it to so let's just press enter and uh, you know that's that's a lot of change that we did again let's come to the other one um, control T or uh, command T again and once again we can take this and we can change we can play with it any way we want so that's that's something that I wanted to demo very quickly is that if you're doing a fireworks composite and if you want to um, you know place them in um, you know according to you like them best that's how you can do it and of course you can not not just placing for placing you can take this uh, move tool and you can move it around which is perfectly fine as well but if you want to change the scale if you want to uh, warp it for example you can press ctrl T and then command T and then pressing down command I'm just moving one corner and as you see that changes the shape that changes the angle of it and you can play around with it in any way you like so it's, it's completely down to uh, your own artistic freedom the, and um, how you want to use it how you want to express yourself so that's the idea um, let me just just go back a few steps until I all right let me not do that let's just let's just stop where we did the crop the the, um, the free transform we're not going to be applying right now so you have this done and once you do this what you what you will be doing is you can close and immediately this uh, picture will be sent back to Lightroom um, of course it looks um, horrible here in this area so maybe there's something we can do here let's see if I can take the black brush and go over it nope that doesn't help but I can work with the other one and I can nope that brings the light in I actually need I can just 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 play with it just a little bit to close it and uh, to make sure that there aren't any smokes the way so that it doesn't look out of place basically um, I'm not playing around with it because I don't I don't have as much time to um, that as I do when I'm just working on it myself but those are the tricks that's the tip that you use oops I somehow I uh, have this little area that's not meant to be this no I should be using a black there you go. all right so that's the brush so somehow this got here so play around with it make sure that you don't have um, these little spots that shouldn't be here that happened when I was just moving around with the transform okay I don't want this. let me just get a completely dark brush and paint over this so that I don't need to worry about the halos there oh there we go yeah I was, I was working very quickly and something um, I just saw that so that's also something you need to care be careful about of course you need to uh, look at your photo before you go back and the way to go back is you can uh, press command W or control W in Windows um, and it's going to save and it's going to go back uh, with the file name that you see here or if you want you can come to file and then save as and give it a um, you know place it in any location give it any name as you want and that'll be picked up and that's going, that's going to be the name that you see so let's let's just save that for now and we hit command W um, yep it's going to be closed after it's saved so it'll save it's almost done of course to, to save space you could have uh, flattened the layer you could have come to layer then flatten and that would have been it but in, in the case of composites I like to keep the layers because you can always come back you can open the file and you can play around with it that that gives you the option of coming back and working with it so here's the file you know the edit um, you know uh, word that you see at the end and so that's how you have it and now if you want you can do all sorts of um, playing around with it um, process it like you would in in uh, like you would process any photo so it's completely down to your own taste play with it 
um, you know make it good make it beautiful you have the entire um, tool set of Lightroom uh, with you and with the added benefit of of course having Photoshop because we went there and we made composites I wish uh, this was a wonderful firework I'm talking about uh, 4th of July 2015 um, I jokingly tweeted that um, uh, Philadelphia was about to put up the best 5th of July fireworks because we were standing there for a long long time and I think they started at around 1130 or something we, we were getting close to midnight and I was there with um, our parents and my uh, little infant so that wasn't fun I hope they'll, they're gonna be more punctual next time uh, but yeah it was a wonderful firework as you can tell from just the few that we have here there were many more I wish I was somewhere around here from where you can see the front of the art museum and there was a concert going on so there was wonderful lights there were people I wish this billboard weren't there because this this is one of the finest vantage points of Philadelphia and these guys have uh, placed a billboard here that really kills it um, but yeah I, I hope you found it useful I wanted to show some uh, quick and easy tips and, tr and tricks that you can use um, anyone can use these are very um, you know these are not difficult skills uh, to use and uh, I hope to see more of your fireworks photos and I wish you all the best have a wonderful time if you uh, if you have any feedback do let me know um, that's it like share let me know get back in touch send me your photos to work with um, send me ideas, tell me what I can do, send, tell me what I'm doing right or wrong or whatnot. Thank you so much.